Welcome back. In the previous video, we studied conditionals and how to make our program behave differently based on a condition. In this episode, we are going to see how a loop works. Loops are essentially a way to iterate through sequences like strings, lists, dictionary, tuples, and other basic data types like sets and keep executing the same bit of code until a certain condition returns true. In this section, we are going to cover for and while loops. A for loop is a controlled flow tool used to iterate through sequences of elements and returns the code inside its body. Let's see first how we, we can define a for loop. For, uh, the for loop is defined using the for keyword followed by a variable uh, which is in this case a placeholder uh, that uh, stores inside it the each element of the sequence that we are going to iterate through and it ends with a semicolon uh, at the end of the line and then the body of the loop uh, which is the actual code that we run is intended to derive from the next line uh, so the loop starts uh, and iterates to the sequence for instance the a sequence of numbers using the rate the range function and uh, that is going to be also the first example that we are going to see uh, but also it's very useful to iterate through strings lists dictionaries tuples and sets so let's define the first loop so for is the first element of the syntax that we need to use then we need to specify a, a variable placeholder and in this case I will use i as a placeholder and then we use the in keyword and in this case I'm going to use the range function which is a function that returns a, a sequence of numbers uh, start, um, ending to the uh, element that we pass inside the range function parenthesis so range and between the parentheses we say like 10 so I will get a sequence of numbers from 0 to 10 and then I can iterate through them so the i um, stores for each iteration the value of the number of the sequence so I will print the i so what, what this is going to do is actually printing the number from 0 to 10 and excluding a 10 if we want to play to print the 10 we need to use uh, instead of a 10 inside the parentheses we need to use an 11 so I'm going to show you how this works so let's print it and you see we got all the numbers from 0 to 9 so we, which is 10 numbers actually but it doesn't print out the number 10 um, so if we want to see the number 10 we need to say 11 inside the range and we will get the number from 0 to 10 um, what it does is just this range function that creates a sequence of numbers in this case so from 0 1 2 3 4 and everything until the number 11 excluding it so this is the basic uh, basic for loop uh, so in this case as i say the range function creates the sequence that we need and that we are using to iterate using this loop alternatively it, the range function can accept parameters uh, to set the starting and ending points of the sequence and also the steps that we might want to uh, used to iterate through this uh, sequence let's uh, make an example like for and in range and then inside the parentheses I'm going to say 10 as the starting point and 100 as the end of the sequence and then I am going to say like 10 for the steps so and now I will print the variable n so each time the loops run, as you say, as you saw here for the previous example, we will get one of the number. 
So from 10, uh, from 0 to 100, uh, so in this case from 10 to 100, and each step will be made of 10. So it would be 0, 10, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, etc. etc. So let's print it out. So you see, we got from here, from here, all the numbers from 10, 20, 30, 40, and up to 90. So excluding the number 100, 100. If we want to print 100, as I said before, we need to say like 110 as the range, as the last element of the range. So uh, the example above, uh, so the second example that I uh, made, um, while in the first example we used a parameter, we, we didn't use any parameter. In the uh, second example, we had the starting point for the sequence, so 10, and then the <clears throat> last number of the sequence that we want, so 110 in this case. And finally, the steps, so um, the steps that we need to increment the counting of these uh, sequence. Uh, as I said before, loops, uh, for a for loop can be useful uh, if we want to iterate through a sequence of elements like strings. So loops is so strings are sequences of characters. So let's say looping a string. So we could uh, define a name variable and then here say my full name and then we use name and then we can use a for loop to loop over the sequence of characters so over this variable with the name uh, so over the variable name and uh, get each line each um, character in a single line so for w in name uh, print W. So that could be Carter if you want. Can be anything. So that's the variable placeholder that you use. It can be anything you like. It, it must be a valid variable. So in this case, when I print um, this uh, bit of code, will return. Uh, each character of the string, one per line. In the same way, we did. Uh, we can do the same thing uh, as you will see in a minute with lists. So you see here from this point, we have uh, the first line F, A, B, I, O, and all the characters of my last name. So as I said, the same thing can be done uh, with lists. So that's going to be the next um, thing that we will cover. Looping a list. Uh, so when we studied list, we say that they are a sequence of elements. So we can use the for loop to loop over its elements and perform any kind of thing and operation that we want on each of these elements. In the following example, uh, we will create a basic, basic program that asks uh, to the user if he likes a type of fruit, for instance, and outputs a message based on its input. Let me write the code and I will explain to you what it does in a minute. Okay, uh, let's run the code and let's see, okay. Do you like Apple? Let's say I say yes. And the program says me too. Do you like banana? No, I love banana, that's his answer. And do you like apricots? Well, I say yes. 
and he says me too do you like beers yes i love beers <laughs> me too and grape no i don't like grape and then it quits the program so let's analyze together this um, short program it's a very simple program that we can create using full loop so we first define a variable that contains a list of fruits in this case so each uh, element of the list is a is a string and inside the string we have one of the favorite fruits um, so then we use the for loop and we say for fruit in fruits so we uh, defined as a variable to result their fruit because uh, we got a list of fruits so it sounds normal to use fruit uh, because this is a fruit and all together are fruits so then we created variable uh, response variable uh, that we assign to the result of an input function that asks to the user uh, if he likes or not uh, one of the fruit that we are using inside the list so this element in for the first iteration has the value of apple so we ask to the user if he likes apple and then we we say here just to give him as a, a way to answer so yes or no and then we use the format um, method on the string because this is a string and then we say that inside this placeholder we want to use the fruit uh, variable so in this case for the first iteration it would be apple and then we convert everything to lowercase using the lower uh, method on the string and then we use the conditional that we saw before so this uh, the other um, control flow tool uh, to check if his response is a yes or a no so if it's a, an, a y um, it doesn't matter if it's a Y in um, capital letters or, or lower cases, it's the same because we converted everything, uh, it's a response to lower cases. So if it's a yes, it's a Y, we uh, print the message me too. Uh, so inside the if block here, we print me too. Otherwise, we use an else if uh, statement. To check if it if the response is a no, so it's an N. And in this case, we print the message that we love the fruit that it said no. And otherwise, if the answer is neither yes or no, we print this message. You exit the loop. And then we break the code. We use the break keyword to interrupt the execution of the loop. So let's see how it, this last bit works. Let's execute the code again. Okay. Do you like Apple? Let's say I use a type X and the program quit immediately and then it says you exit the loop. So this is how we could um, exit the loop uh, and break uh, the execution of our code. And <clears throat> after list, um, in the previous videos, we studied dictionaries and loops. So both are sequence as well. So um, we can iterate through them using the for loop. Let's see them in action. So looping. Let's see. Okay. For... Um, I am going to write a short program also for this. Uh, I mean, three example. So let me copy my notes from my notes. Okay, so first we define a variable where that we assign um, this dictionary. Once we got this, we can use the for loop uh, to iterate through uh, its elements so we can use we can do that actually in three different ways we can first iterate through both uh, the key and the value so this is the key and this is the value uh, or we can iterate only through the keys 
so name, age, job, skills, uh, or only through the values. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is how to iterate through both the key and the value using the items method on the dictionary. So for, we define two variables this time. So one is the variable that will store the value of the key and the other one is the value. And I'm going to call them key and value because that's what they represent. represent. So in the user stats, and then we use the items uh, method on the dictionary. And that's going to uh, store so the key inside the key value, the key variable, and the value inside the value uh, variable for each iteration. So let's print a message. And let's run it. So that's the first example. Uh, let's run it. Let's save first. And then we execute the code. And we need to break this because we don't want that. Okay. So from this line, where it is. Okay. So from this line, we printed this is the key name and this is the value, Fabio. And again, for each of the element inside the dictionary, we printed different message. So this is the key age, this is the value 40, and so on until we reach the last element of the, um, of the sequence. But as I said, we can use a different method to iterate through all of the keys. So for e in user stuff keys and then we print uh, let's say only the key okay let me comment out this let's just comment out this one and also everything else. Okay, let's comment this out. All right, let's execute the code. And you will see from this line, we got only the key as the message that we passed here inside the print function. So only the key, name, age, job, and skills. So when the um, sequence ends, the code stops. Now we can iterate in the same way using the values method on the dictionary so we will get only the values. So let's try it out. So for value in the user that values we use the values method and then we can print this message. And in here, we use the value variable. And now you will see that when we execute the code, we got an error. But it's not going to be values, okay. One S. So the method is values, not value. And you see here, we got as a result only the values so if you want to perform any kind of operation maybe you want to store them in a database or in a different format you can do that with the for loop so you extract from uh, the sequence each of the element and then you can output a message or do whatever you want it depends from the uh, program that you are building so in this example um, we use the dictionary and we saw three types of mm, the three methods that we can use to iterate through the dictionary. In the first, we use the items method of the dictionary object and we assign its key and values to a variable placeholder, so key and value, uh, that we define after the for keyword. So here, here we define these two variable placeholders and then we printed the message with both results that we got from 
um, that we got stored inside these variables. In the second example, we use the keys method um, to to store each key value, uh, each key, uh, not value, but the key itself uh, inside the key placeholder. In this case, it's a variable placeholder. Uh, then we output a message with only the key. Um, so only the key, this one here. Finally, we use the values method to grab only the values and uh, store them inside a value placeholder variable uh, before printing a message. We can call this variable placeholders um, as we like, I mean it doesn't matter as far as it makes sense for the entire program. If you call this x and y, the program is going to work anyway. I mean as long as you do x and y here, but that doesn't make much, much sense. So you print it and you, you won't get any, any kind of error. I mean, this is going to work anyway. But when you read the code, it's less readable and it's not the best practice. So um, let's see finally uh, how to loop over a sequence of elements inside the tuple. Um, so let's define a variable user data. Let me grab the data to pass. Okay, this is a tuple. Uh, each element is separated by a comma and it's an immutable sequence of elements, as I said in the previous video. So uh, let's look over each of the elements. So let's say for element in user data print element. Okay. Element, meant, okay. And then now let's see what we get. We we'll print the code, we run the code, and we will get each of the element on a single line. So this is how you loop over a sequence of elements using the for loop. Make sure you practice with loops as they are one of the most powerful tools that we have. Uh, next, I am going to show you uh, another loop called while loop. So let's see. Let's see what it does. So the while loop keeps executing the code inside its body as long as a condition that we define is true. Attention, make sure that inside the loop body you change the value of the condition to make sure it ends, <clears throat> the loop ends at some point. Otherwise, you will fall into an infinite loop and you will need to close your terminal window because it will be stuck forever. In, in the previous example with for loop, the uh, sequence ends, so at the end of the sequence, the sequence is completed and uh, so the code stops the execution. In this case, it won't happen, so we need to make sure that we um, make it end. So to define a, for, um, a while loop, we need to first initialize a variable with the condition that we want to, in, to change inside uh, our loop that will be used to um, to change the, the result of the condition inside our loop. Then we uh, use the while keyword followed by our condition and a semicolon to close the line. The body of the loop is intended to the right like everything else that we saw so far. So the if statements and uh, the for loop, every, one, every of which uh, of these tools has its body intended to the right. And then we need to change the value of the variable that we instantiated at the beginning, that we initialized at the beginning, 
to make sure that our code at some point stop the execution uh, when we expect it, it to do so. Let's first see a basic example of a while loop and then we will create a short program. All right, let's define a number variable and then let's say it's zero. So this is our starting point. And then we will use a, a while loop and we are going to say number uh, less than 10. So this loop will execute um, as long as the value of number is less than 10. So if we say print, uh, we are in loop mode iteration um, but and then say format no number okay if we execute the code now the loop will never end because every time it uh, it runs so the first time number is equal to zero so zero is less than 10 so it will print this um, this bit of code here so this message in the next iteration number is still zero so number is still less than 10 and that will be uh, this bit of code will be printed and that's going to happen forever unless we change the value of the variable that we sent it here so how do we do that we assign we, we actually increment its value using num this uh, syntax number six equal to the number value plus one you can increment of uh, um, whatever you want it can be one two three ten or whatever um, it doesn't matter so in this case the first iteration the number the value of number is zero and then we print the message and then we increment the value of one so number is equal number plus one and actually we can do that in two different ways uh, this is the long version but short uh, shortcut is going to be numbers uh, plus plus equal to one and that's going to be the same you can choose one or the other it doesn't matter so let's see what, what it does let's clear the screen first and let's execute the code and here we got this code that execute until we reach the number nine and it stops when the value of uh, number is 10 because 10 is no longer equal to 10 is no longer less than 10 uh, so our code just stops if we don't use that the code will never stop and we'll execute until we close the window if we are uh, working on the browser we will need to close the browser so um, inside the loop we printed the message and after it we incremented the variable number of one each time the loop runs uh, the value the value of number will be incremented of one so number uh, plus one so the first time number is zero and we add one and at the next iteration, the number of the, the, the value inside the variable number is one, and that is still less than 10. And then we print the message and we increment the value of the number variable of one again. So one plus one is two, and two is still going to be less than 10. And so our uh, message is printed and then we increment again of one and it's going to, it's going to be mm, the value of number is going to be three and so on until we reach 10 and then the loops end if we forgot to increment the value of the number variable we will be actually fucked and we need to close the window uh, in this case the terminal and uh, run our code again so let's uh, see a practical example. How do you use the loop? So a loop, a, a while loop is really powerful. We can do 
uh, a lot of things, even creating a short game. In this case, I'm going to create a lucky number game uh, that is going to use the while loop and a few if and else uh, statements to um, ask and uh, the um, the input uh, function to ask the user uh, its favorite number. So let's see it in action. Let's first, as I said, define. Let's clear the screen first. Okay, let's first define a variable. Uh, let's call it this uh, lucky number game. Okay, let's first in, in initialize the variable. Uh, in this case, I'm going to say play, 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 and it's going to be true. So the while loop will say while play is equal to true. Okay, we keep running the code inside its body. So let's first define a number variable and uh, number so this variable will store the user input so input type a number and then uh, and then now we say that a lucky number is going to be whatever the user uh, input was. Let's drop that inside a number, an integer uh, function. So this is going to convert the output of the input function to an integer because by default uh, the, the output of the input uh, function is a string. So this is going to be a number now and then we will multiply that by 3. So that's going to be the lucky number. And then we print a message. We use square, the curly brackets as a placeholder and then the format method and say lucky number. Okay, now we need to do a few more things because we want uh, to ask to the user after he so it's like number if we want to play a game so input to another input and then here a message no and then we give him two options so yes or no so if he types Y, uh, we keep running the code. If he types N, we stop the code. Uh, if he types anything else, we still just, I don't know, probably uh, quit the program anyway. Let's see. Okay, if uh, the variable want to play in lowercase, is going to be a y say that the variable play is still true so the code keeps going otherwise true. otherwise uh, so l if uh, wants to play Uh, once to play is equal to no, you know, in lowercase again, and you see what when and then we say um, that the variable play now uh, is a false, and the code will the loop will stop in this way. Um, well, that's good. We say we print a message and say goodbye. Hmm. 
we can use an else uh, block here and we say if it doesn't type yes or no we we still want to understand what, what it wants to do so our player and let's say uh, print come on just type yes or ah uh, okay just type yes or no um, and then again we will ask to the user if he wants to print so to keep going so if he wants to play and we will use again this and see what he wants to do now we still need to make another check and what i'm going to do is actually just copy what i wrote here we want to keep looping until it gives the user gives the answer that we want so let's copy that and let's put this inside the block so as you see we can um, nest a multiple um, of these here we can uh, nest each of these uh, statements and then conditionals inside uh, one of the other and that's not going to be a problem so let's run this code and see what we get so let's run the code and the program asks me to type a number let's say seven and it says my lucky number is 21 and then he asks me to continue let's see if the block that we used here works come on let's type a, a dead and see what we got so we got this message come on just type yes or no and do you want to continue let's say yes and then again we are asked to um, type a number so a number is going to be 10 and you see we got your lucky number is 30 let's say this time we, we don't want to keep going and we want to quit the program so we type n and we receive this message goodbye and the program stops so the loop uh, the loop stop the execution of the code inside its body and the program is done and completed so that's it for loops uh, while you study these concepts if you enjoyed the video uh, make sure to subscribe leave a comment uh, and a thumb up uh, it takes just a second i'll see you in the next video where we are going to study if I'm not wrong, functions. So I'll see you there. Cheers.